I suppose it was a phone call from David Croft's office. Uh, was I uh, available, you know, for such and such a date? Uh, and I said, yes, of course I am, because uh, I hadn't done very much television then. And uh, it, it just followed on from there. They, uh, they sent the script, said what, they, what it was. Uh, it was a part of a fire chief. Uh, and this was a new uh, sitcom, which I, I knew not, well, nobody knew anything about it, really. Uh, so I was quite sort of uh, honoured, really, to be asked to do this, because I was, I was unknown, really, on television. I'd just done a... The very first television I ever did was a black and white show, long before the black and whites that everybody knows, when we sat in a semicircle and we were all made up in black, so you couldn't pick out which one was which, so it didn't matter. So as I said, I, I hadn't uh, done anything. And uh, I went along for a chat, and it was this lovely, lovely part of a fire chief. Uh, and the idea was that uh, Captain Mannering uh, had the village hall f to, for drilling his troops and I was to come in and take it over with my uh, la ladders and uh, what was it? Oh, hose pipes and things like that. Uh, and so that's how it started really, just, just out of the blue. And I think I was booked because uh, David Croft knew the summer season scene because his parents were in were performers doing that themselves so he was brought up with that uh, and i suppose he reckoned that uh, the comics in the summer season who had to do a bit of everything sort of dance sing play the sketches and do their own spot you know they're good sort of all-rounders most comics are good all-rounders really uh, and he knew that uh, he was probably you know could rely on me to give a decent performance uh, and that's how it started. Um, when, I, when I went along for the first rehearsal, I was in awe of all these old actors, you know, well-known well actors, um, Arthur and John LeMessurier uh, and the, uh, John Laurie. Oh, uh, Arnold, Arnold Ridley, yes, yes, that particular, I wanted to think of him, Arnold Ridley. Yes, you know, they were there and there was me sort of sitting in the corner with all these wonderful names. But Bill, Bill Pertwee, of course, was an old mate of mine, so I didn't know somebody there. Yeah. Well, yes, from what I can remember, it's very, you know, it's 50 years ago now. Um, the idea that I, I was going to come in and drill my firemen and Arthur had his troops uh, and they were the squad, or should I say, and they were drilling in, in the village hall. And uh, I, I reckon I had uh, precedent over Arthur's troops, and he reckoned the same with his over me. Anyhow, we, we kept on, and the idea was I used to bring, bring all these ladders in. And the amazing thing was that nobody else, there were, I had no firemen. It was all done off scene, pushing the ladders on, which I took control of because Arthur tried to keep drilling his, his sort of firemen as we were going along and I was bringing the ladders on and they were getting you mixed know. I'd done uh, you know with his little sort of wacky wacky behavior he got caught up in one of the ladders up here uh, carrying him along uh, and it was sheer chaos uh, and so it looked very good but on the third uh, third night when I got back home after rehearsals David Croft phoned me and said, Gordon, I don't know how I'm going to say this to you, but we've been timing the show and we're going to be so, so overrun over time that the only thing I can see looking through the script is to cut your scene completely. Because it, it took overall, uh, in and out different shots and scenes, it took a good three minutes off. So he said, I, I'm so, so sorry and whatnot. But of course, I was disappointed very disappointed but if I'd known what the what the you know the success of the whole thing would be wow I would have been heartbroken really but so you know but he said I promise I promise you and he kept saying I promise I promise because he really was upset about this I promise that as soon as the, something comes up you would be doing it and true true to word he uh, he phoned about three weeks later and said Gordon I've got a part for you the part of the policeman I said, well, I'm not big enough for a policeman. Oh, no, no, it's wartime, wartime, you know, it doesn't matter. 
he was uh, calling up anybody to be a policeman. <laughs> so, uh, so I went along and did that, and that is one of the episodes that's missing. <laughs> so after the very first one, I, I was cut out of that, and the second one they lost it, so it wasn't a good start. However, I did four more. Uh, David was quite uh, true to his word, he did use me four more times. Think, thinking back, uh, Bill wasn't in that first one, uh, and the fire chief, it was such a big part, mm. you know, and to give it to me, I don't know, amazing, mm. really. Mm. And I've often thought that if it had stayed in, mm. it would have registered, and, and they would have brought fire chief in more, mm. Mm. you know, yes. than just the one episode, because yeah. it was such, such a good part. But, but Jimmy and David seemed to do that because Bill was relatively unknown. That's right, yes, yes. And, and the ones, the, the th thing about Bill, they really had to bully him, into, bully him into sort of speaking, shouting out loud, because he was a quiet chap, mm. quiet mm. voice. Mm. Uh, and they said, no, Bill, in rehearsals, no, Bill, give it more, we want more, you know. Mm. You know sort of being the uh, sort of aggressive yeah. man. It, it wasn't his nature. You get sort of a typecast, really, in lots of ways. Mm. You know, Bill kept saying, oh, God, he said, I'm fed up with being the, you know, Af afterwards, years and years mm. afterwards. Mm. He said, they still, you know, they can't see me other than the ARP warden. No. I thought, well, you know, think of the bank balance. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it won't be so bad. Yeah. Funny about that, that bad cough, because I never thought anything about it. But at one of your um, uh, weekends, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, with the Dad's Army Appreciation Society, and we were meeting the public, and this young girl, she could only be about 15, 14 or 15, uh, she came up and asked my autograph, and she said, oh, she said, I thought you looked so funny when you were the lighthouse keeper with that cough of yours. Oh, every time I see it, I laugh and laugh and laugh. And I said, really? She said, yes, she said, it's so funny. I never thought of that mm. as being, you know, that, that sort of funny that it, a young girl, mm. you know, so many years afterwards that she found it very funny. But then I, that, that, well, of course, that was the crux of the whole scene, really. You know, I'm sort of coughing and spluttering in between Mannering, trying to get to say how he's men. He said, my men will uh, turn, the, turn the light out. I said, no, no, you know, they, uh, they haven't, uh, they'll, they'll need the key for that. Yeah. Oh, uh, so my men will find it. They're on board there. They're on the lighthouse. They'll just find the door and open the door. I said, no, they won't. Oh, yes, yes, they will. He said, no, no, no. Uh, and, and eventually, eventually it comes to, why won't they open the doors? Because I've got the key That's standing right. on shore here <laughs> and they were in the lighthouse. So it's a lovely payoff, lovely tagline. Yes, yes, that, that was quite amazing. I don't know whether the, uh, the, well, the public will know about this now because there were three episodes that were lost. Uh, and due to the uh, diligence of uh, a certain man, Mr. Tom Webber, we'd been trying for years and years to get them remade. It's been successful uh, and it's being shown on uh, gold. Unfortunately, I think it, it's a shame it's not going to be on, on uh, big television, BBC One or two. But anyhow, those that uh, follow gold uh, would be able to see them. They uh, it just finished uh, a week ago from when we were filming this little uh, interview. Uh, and uh, I was invited along to the very first one, which was the episode, The Strike for Fraser, that uh, I, I was missing, or no, I wasn't missing, the episode was missing. Uh, and I found it very, very interesting indeed. I, I thought it was so well done. Uh, the, the casting was very, very good, better, better than, quite honestly, than the big film, when Toby Jones was excellent as Mannering, but I didn't think the other characters were cast as good as they, they were on these uh, repeats, you know, on the, the lost episodes. And I thought that the... Uh, it was so funny. One of the funniest episodes is Strike for Phaser, which uh, hopefully you will have seen, or, or see it when it does come out, um, because it, there were so many laughs in it. It's very, very rarely I laugh out loud, uh, you know, being a, a good old comic myself. Uh, but I did on that night, and it was a great pleasure. It was so well done. The sets were excellent. The casting was excellent, as they say. and, and 
it was a great pleasure to be there. The, the young man that played my part was much, much taller, and he looked much more like a policeman than I would have done, so. I can't say that there was one particular scene. Um, I think, as we were talking earlier, the, uh, when they were dressed up as Germans was very, very funny. I always laugh when dear Bill Pert, we had to go in the water. Yeah. He, he, he took it all so well, but I, I wasn't it when I, because I, I didn't know what was happening on some of them, or, or, or most of them that I wasn't in. So when he, watching it again, and I could see the water, and I thought, oh dear, Bill's gonna go. <laughs> and he did. Because it's funny. It's just basic comedy. You know, it's, it's not uh, rude or filthy as some of the young comics are. Uh, it's just basic situation comedy. Uh, and and that is why what pleases me greatly is that the youngsters like it. You know, young, young families, uh, they, they still, uh, well, as, as that young girl coming up to me about the cough, mm -hmm. you know. It, it's it's indestructible, really, you know. Uh, it's you know what was the other one? Uh, Fools and horses. Yes. You see, it's the characters. Yes. The characters are so strong, and uh, the the script, the writing. With a sitcom, the first and most important thing is the writing, and the second is the casting. And if you get those right, you're almost certain to have a hit. If if the situation is right. And that's what is what the Dad's Army, perfect situation. Uh, and uh, I, I can relate to it because I'm old enough to have been in the war. You know, I was in the Royal Navy for, in 1943. I volunteered when I was 17 and a half. Uh, so I can appreciate, you know, the situations. 92, 93 in November. 29th, if you're at all interested, and you can get my address from uh, <laughs> Yes, 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 I did a show uh, earlier this week in London. Uh, and the funny thing was, uh, you probably noticed that I've got a crown out. I don't normally have that gap. Uh, and it came out that morning. I, so I, I, I wasn't going to cancel the show just for that. But nobody noticed. Nobody <laughs> noticed that it was missing. And it, to me, it's such a gaping gap. I'm delighted that you are still you know, interested uh, and keen as ever, which is lovely. And I, I hope, uh, and I, I think quite honestly, with the lost episodes coming up, the, the, the three lots of audiences are there. So on a, there was it on a, a Friday night at Pinewood they were recorded. Uh, and certainly when the, the night I was there, I gave a, a big plug to Dad's Army Appreciation Society. But what I didn't say, and I should have done, because Tony and Paul, was it Paul? Paul, Tony and Paul were there. Uh, and I said, there they are sitting, you know, go and see them about joining. I should have said it on the internet, and I, you know, which was much easier because some people were running off for their buses or whatever it was, the, the transport they came in. Um, but I, as I say, I'm delighted you're still interested uh, because it's still there and your, your children, obviously, you drag them along and make sure that they are. But I think you know, it's, it's a naturally funny show and it will never, ever die.